Infinix sent over the new VIP, I'm kind of a big deal. All right, do you ever just find yourself rooting for a brand? Like they give you the good happy feels? Over the last two years or so, for me personally, some of the most exciting advancements in phones have been in the tech that arrives at lower prices. Watching numerous manufacturers deliver not only basically functional phones for lower costs, but increasingly competing with new technologies and delivering. These are some pretty good looking phones. Infinix has been a lot of fun to watch in the space where literally every major phone release I've played with has been nicer than the one that came before it. So they sent over the Note 12 VIP for me to test drive and share my thoughts. <laughs> Immediately, it's kind of fun to see a label other than pro on a phone to mean a little more expensive. In this case, VIP. That totally works for me. The VIP continues a tradition of improving lifestyle features and keeping costs in check. There's a lot of polish on this hardware. In general, I just really like this trend of going on flatter sides for phones. It really does make a portable companion gadget easier to hold. And it's in this valley of mid-cost phones that we get better practical hardware. The headphone jack, still there. Now this isn't audiophile grade, but it's perfectly capable of decent playback. Memory card upgrade, of course. And I'm using the 256 gig model of this phone and guess what? It's still nice being able to add a card to dump a ton of media onto and prevent your phone storage from getting filled up. Power button fingerprint sensor, still my favorite way to unlock a phone. It's the most consistent way to have the phone ready to use even before you're looking at the screen. And this screen is pretty nice, respectably bright, high refresh rate. This is one of the areas we've literally seen the most improvement. You know, this is what helps a phone feel more fluid and it's great for media playback. Even if it's not bleeding edge, it's new enough to scale the refresh for better power management. So when we talk about the SOC and horsepower, I think for the target market of consumers looking at a device like this, it's okay that we're holding steady at a certain tier of performance, but improving features on the phone for a nicer lifestyle experience. This goes hand in hand with the battery. You know, a more powerful SOC is handy for heavier compute work, but even when covering basic stuff, the more powerful a phone is, the shorter that battery is going to last. The MediaTek Helio in this phone isn't going to set the world on fire for compute work or for high-end gaming, but it performs very well for single tasks and gets excellent battery life. And I've said this before, I've said it a bunch of times, but I think too many reviewers overlook the tangible benefit of better battery when they're complaining about lower compute power chips. Because the navigation and daily use stuff is handled surprisingly well. This is the smoothest performing Infinix I've used yet, and we're not talking anything radically different in terms of SOC. You're really only going to feel those processor slowdowns when you're trying to do some heavier multitasking, like installing an app in the background and then trying to do something on the screen at the same time. Otherwise, you're probably going to be good. We can expect reasonable performance on games which aren't too graphically demanding. Software on tap is in pretty good shape. This is an updated version 10 of the XOS skin running on top of Android 12. Now there is a lot of pre-installed value added software for individual services and a whole standalone app store. I'm really not familiar with the Palm store being a North American reviewer, but after doing just a little cleaning, I'd say the performance is solid. Now this isn't quite as playful a skin as MIUI, but there are some nice differentiators like the big folder mode, which where a folder acts more like a large widget. I've always liked that on Infinix. Overall, the animations are slick, progress through the UI is nice and smooth, though I still don't like split notification shades where one edge of the screen has all of your quick actions and toggles and the other edge of the screen is where you get your notifications. I think that's a little complicated. Also, the app drawer, that's still a little clumsy. You swipe up from the bottom to get a vertical scrolling drawer. This is good, that's correct. But if you slide it back down, it just stays in place. And that's incorrect. The phone is adamant. You have to pick an app or use the back button 
to go back to your home screen. But lastly, we should talk about the camera, which I've also been impressed by, but this is one of the areas, again, where we might feel the performance differences between more affordable, and more expensive phones. All around, sensors have been getting larger. Resolutions have been getting higher. But hanging with these more power efficient processors, the hardware improvements are felt more on still photos than on video. The stills from this phone are pretty good. We get respectably quick shutter action, very good dynamic range. The software is juicing the photos up a little more than I would prefer, but folks mostly sharing on social media are probably gonna dig these brighter popping colors. The larger sensor surface area also helps with lower light performance, and the night mode is pretty good for a phone in this class. It's the video. Video is still in a holding pattern. Now we do climb up to 2K video, so we can do a little better than most of the phones shooting only 1080p, but Infinix still doesn't employ any kind of software stabilization, so footage, is gonna be really shaky. It's a good quality video, but it's probably not gonna be much fun to watch back if you're shooting mostly handheld. But that's about where we should start bringing this plane in for a landing, using this phone for about two weeks under embargo. I gotta say, year over year, it's impossible to not be impressed with how far these phones have come. Of course, we're always going to be interested in the top tier performers and the most expensive solutions. Those are always fun for driving YouTube traffic. My personal daily drivers are going to be phones that can replace laptop compute use. There's a really fun game to be played with family and friends who have older phones and maybe they don't need more compute power, but they still want a nicer device than what they currently own. Maybe someone can't afford a premium tier phone, and now they can get a lot closer to the nicer lifestyle features. Some folks out there, especially folks in, in my comments watching my videos, they'll prefer shopping an older, used, or refurbished premium phone, but some folks, they want to buy brand new. Options like the Infinix Note 12 VIP come in clutch for the right consumer looking to have some fun with an affordable solution. So I will, of course, leave some links down below where you can find more information on this phone here, the Note 12 VIP. Maybe shop one of these bad boys online. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been incredible. Those of you who are checking out links, maybe you've hit my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or you're joining the list of names scrolling by from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch. Also on the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next review.